starting today a series of videos on the book The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. I got this book. I overpaid for it. I paid about four cents for it. <laughs> uh, but actually, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I've highlighted, uh, underlined some things that he says in here and just tell you what he says and then tell you you know what God's view or what the Bible is uh, on that or what I believe God's view is I should say right now I'm on page 64 um, and what I, f I think it's gonna be very good because what he's doing my understanding is he's debunking the God of Judaism Christianity and Islam and what I believe in I don't believe in any of those gods I believe in the God of the Bible and that's a lot different than the the God that even Christianity portrays and so I think it's good because he'll show some bad parts to religion things that are done in the name of God uh, which aren't true so we're gonna go through that I'm gonna have my lovely wife Lana is going to uh, be giving now I've re been reading the book she hasn't so what she's hearing is going to be for the first time and so but I'll let her you know give her perspective as well so we're going to start off this is the 2008 paperback edition the first one he came out with was a hardback came out in 2006 and this is the 2008 I don't know what he's done since then I just know that this is a book that atheists like to use to try to show how bad Christianity is which is the main reason why I was excited to find this book and wanted to get it so the first thing he does in here is he does a preface to the 2008 edition which is answering some concerns that have been brought up since the 2006 edition and then he has a second preface which is the original preface to the book so we're going to start off with the, just go in the order he has, which is the 2008 preface. So that's the first thing we're going to do, preface to the paperback edition. Okay, one of the uh, objections that he's uh, given here uh, by people of his original book, they say, quote, You can't criticize religion without a detailed analysis of learned books of theology, end quote. And so he answers that. But I wanted to bring up that really this whole book isn't about, I mean, according to the title, the title is The God Delusion. The God Delusion. And so he's not in the title, or what he says, he's not debunking religion, which actually is what he does as he goes against religion. But so right there it shows you that the name of his book is incorrect. It should be The Religion Delusion. The fact that he says the God delusion, but then his whole book is about criticizing religion, shows that he's starting with a bad premise as it, be, it begins with. Because they, his criticism of his book is you can't criticize religion without a detailed analysis of learned books of theology. And really, what he should be doing, if he believes there is no God, is that he shouldn't be going against learned books of theology or against religion. He should be showing how the Bible is wrong and the God of the Bible is wrong. But So right away you can see that he's attacking the wrong thing. Because by attacking religion, religion is man's way to get to God. And the Bible is God's way for man to get to God. It's two completely different things. And by him attacking religion, what it's showing is that he is not going to do one iota against the God of the Bible. He will rather, and he even admits he, later on, was, we'll see, he goes against the Old Testament God. The God of Abraham is really what primarily this book is against. But the, the God of Abraham isn't the God of the Bible. It's the God of Abraham that religion has made him out to be. So right away it shows that... Um, it's not a book that you need to be scared of and saying, oh, you know, it's, it's doing great harm to God because he doesn't even attack the one true God, the God of the Bible. 
And then the next criticism he's given, quote, you always attack the worst of religion and ignore the best, end quote. Again, it shows his attack is incorrect, that he attacks religion, and so he brings up bad things about religion without bringing up the good things. And the point is that if he was attacking the God of the Bible, and this is why he doesn't do it, is because if you had a true portrayal of the God of the Bible, there is no way you cannot bring about the worst in God because there is nothing bad about God. God is good. And there is no evil, there is no bad in him. So all he can do is attack what man says God is. He really can't attack God himself because he will find no bad thing about God. God is love. God is good. Uh, everything that's good in this world comes from God. Uh, there is no bad or evil in God. Okay, so then the next thing, this is page 18, and well, he brings up a point. The objection was, you are only preaching to the choir, what's the point? In other words, people who believe in God or Christians aren't going to read your book, so why even go through this? Well, And atheists won't read it anyway because they don't believe. Yeah, and that's, that's a very good point. Atheists won't believe it either. I know I have a friend who used to work with atheists and they were always talking about Richard Dawkins and the God delusion and about how wonderful this guy is and he's supporting atheists. But actually, very few atheists have probably read this book. They probably do, just like atheism is a religion, whether they want to admit it or not. As we'll get through, we'll see, as we go through the book, we'll see that. But you see, it's a, it's a New York Times bestseller. So if you're an atheist, you buy this book, and then if someone, a Christian, comes against you, well, then you can say, oh, well, Richard Dawkins says this or that, or, you know, it's really this. And What they've done is they've made Richard Dawkins out to be a god. And this book, then, is the god, the Bible of their atheist god, Richard Dawkins. And a lot like Christians, who claim to represent the God of the Bible when they don't know, they don't read their Bible, they buy it and stick it on their shelf. Probably a lot of atheists have done that with this book too. So it's a bestseller just like the Bible is, but probably not a lot of them know what's in it. So he claims that he wants to get atheists to come out of the closet is why he's doing that. He's saying that a lot of, he says a lot of people are atheists it's just they are scared to admit it. They're afraid of the backlash that they're going to get from Christianity. And so he's writing this book to get atheists to come out of the closet. And then he says, here's a quote. He says, a more subtle reason for preaching to the choir is the need to raise consciousness. When the feminists raise our consciousness about sexist pronouns, and he gives an example. And I think this is ridiculous. The idea is that we want to raise consciousness about how Christians or religion or the society of the United States or you know wherever they are is against atheism, when atheism is the true belief that everybody should believe. And he mentions this about sexist pronouns, about how it used to be when you get a book and you use a pronoun referring to a person and I always say he, he this, he that. And then the feminists say, oh, well, that's, that's sexist, that you always refer to humans as male. They're, you're ignoring half of the population. There are females, too. And so then people started, books started to be written, they would say he or she instead of just he. And then they changed it to start saying she or he, sort of the affirmative action that the females have been oppressed over all these years and so now we're going to get them out of this oppression by uh, putting them first above the man. And now what you see in books usually is when they refer to people as a whole and but they use a singular pronoun 
of he or she, what they'll do is they'll alternate. So sometimes they'll say he, and sometimes they'll say she, and then they try to make them equal so that they're fair to the to the human race. And yes, go ahead. I just want to say one thing, and, and this he she stuff, feminism. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of in my life. Oh, I'm insulted because you you only the Bible only says uh, man. It doesn't say woman. You know, it doesn't say woman. It's always man. Man this, man that. Okay, hello. What's the last three letters in whoa man? What's the last three letters in hue man? If you're hue man, that includes the female. If he says man, he's including woman, man. Okay, I'm sorry. That was just stupid. I just had to say that. Yeah, and that's. I'm glad you said that because I was going to make a similar point. But since I'm a man, it may seem as a sexist comment. So I'm glad that my wife... I'll make the sexist comment. Thank well, you. You, you're allowed to do that because you're a protected <laughs> class in society. The, the white man is not protected in the United States. You can discriminate against him, but you can't discriminate against a female. You can, you can sue over that. Well, I just said it. It's stupid. Yeah. And, and, and that's the point is that... I doubt, you know, he says, well, feminisms raised our, con it says, the feminist raised our consciousness about sexist pronouns. And, like I say, I'm not a woman, but here's a woman who just verified this, is that I doubt there are many girls out there who growing up in school and reading books and then, you know, as they mature and everything and they read more books, I doubt there were many women who says, this book is written by a male chauvinist. All they say is he, 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 he. They don't say she, how dare they? I'm not gonna read that book. This person is, is sexist and they're, they're a bunch of idiots. I'm not gonna read it. Most women don't care. They understand, like Lana said, that when God made man, he made man, male and female made he him. Included, it, man isn't the name of a male person. Man is the name that God gave to the human race. Just like a dog is an animal. If you say a dog, we don't know if you're talking about a female dog or a male dog. You we don't just, see a female dog going, I'm insulted. Yeah. <laughs> you're just talking about a creature known as a dog. You're not getting into the male or female aspect. And it's the same thing with humans. When God made man, he made humans. He made a race of people. He, he made, he, uh, not a race of people, he made a, his creation was people. And he called people man. That's the name of it. Just like the dog is the name of an animal, then this this creation that God made of us, he called that creation man. And within man, there is male and female. And so it's not a sexist thing to say he. He, when you refer to a group of people, is just a reference to, actually it's incorrect, it should be them or they. But if you're going to use a singular pronoun to refer to a plural group of people, um, he is the correct one to use because it's a reference to the ma to the man that the God made man, not m male man, but man that is male or female. And so the fact that he says, well, we need to show between he or she, and this was raising our consciousness, so now we make this distinction in books now and everybody's happier. Women did not care if he's just saying he. They weren't saying anything bad about females. And people who have a basic understanding of the human race understand that females are included as part of the creation of man. And also, I think my IQ is high enough, I'm intelligent enough, that I'm not offended if it says man. I know what man means, you know, uh, for people, you know, people out there watching the video, I know what man means. It's not uh, a, a guy or uh, it's 
a guy and a girl. That's what man means. It's like the human race. You know, we're together. I'm intelligent enough that I am not insulted. Apparently, my IQ must be higher than those of a feminist. Hmm. My consciousness has uh, superseded theirs. Wow. Go figure. And so he makes this point to show about raising the consciousness of females and he's equating it to raising the consciousness of atheism to say that all, a lot of us are atheists it's just it's not been put out there that it's okay to be an atheist and so I'm writing this book to say it's okay to be an atheist and it's a funny thing that he makes this parallel because most people don't care most women don't care that the he pronoun is used because they understand they're smarter than that and that's the same thing with atheism is that Romans 1 says and, I, and I'll read it to you Romans 1 verse 19 uh, yeah verse 19 says because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So Richard Dawkins makes the argument that pretty much everybody is an atheist, but we it's not been okay to be an atheist, so we need to let everybody know that it's okay. But the fact of the matter is, is according to God's word, which is true, is that everybody knows there is a God. He's, he made the world and there is a Godhead and we should worship him. And so if he wants to raise consciousness, the consciousness isn't atheism. The consciousness is that there is a God because everybody knows that the Bible is true whether they want to admit it or not. It was the same thing with he and she women understood that it wasn't sexist to use the term he to refer to just a general group of humans and similarly humans understand people understand that it is not the norm to believe that there is no God the feminists make the argument that oh it's sexist so now we change everything to equate to the feminist ideal and that's what Richard Dawkins is trying to do here with his book is that the the innate within every person is the knowledge that there is a God and that he created the world and he is worthy of worship and what Richard Dawkins is trying to do just like the feminist is try to come up with a new ideology or a religion or belief that there is no God and have that replace what everybody knows that there is a God okay then the next thing let's see that he says um, he comes up with the idea that atheists do not need to be polite and respectful of faith um, in other words, if he writes this book and he's going against religion, well, you know, you shouldn't do that. You should tolerate others. You should be able to, um, you know, get along with everybody else and let people believe what they want to. And he says that, no, he doesn't have to be respectful to faith because he says faith isn't something that is innate in someone. He says, quote, religious opinion is the one kind of parental opinion that by almost universal consent can be fastened upon children who are in truth too young to know what their opinion really is there is no such thing as a Christian child only a child of Christian parents end quote so basically what he's saying is he's going against what I just read in Romans 1 that there that everyone knows there is a God he is saying that children are just a clean slate they know nothing about God or creator or anything like that and what man does is he indoctrinates the parents indoctrinate their children with false beliefs and so Richard Dawkins by promoting atheism is trying to get people back to what's really true instead of following this mythical religious stuff well isn't that what he's doing with if I don't know if he has children or not 
but he's taken a, a, his child, which he just said is a clean slate, and indoctrinating his child to believe that there is no God. So Exactly, and that's the point we're making, is that the Bible is true. God has given truths to children to know that there is a God. And what Richard Dawkins is doing is he's trying to brainwash people. So what he's accusing religion of doing and saying that he's trying to clear up this is the exact opposite is the exact thing that he is doing. He's taking what people know about God and he's trying to brainwash them with the religion of atheism. All right, we'll continue here next time. Thanks for watching.